Hi everybody, welcome to Right to the Top, I'm Adam. In today's video, I'm going to continue looking at punctuation, and I'm going to continue with the comma. So this is actually part two. I've already made a video, part one, you can see a link for it up here, where I discussed the comma used with and, but, or, etc., with coordinating conjunctions. Today, I want to look at essential versus non-essential use of the comma. Now, essential means you, you, it's necessary, you have to use it. Non-essential means the, the thing you're putting the commas around is not very necessary to the sentence, which means you can take it out. Essential, use a comma. Non-essential, uh, don't use a comma. Now, before I go, go on, we're going to be looking at clauses and phrases, and whether you need a comma before, after, or both, etc. And we do not use a comma with these types of clauses and phrases, and we do use a comma with these types. Now, the problem is that different people study with different grammar books, and different grammar books have different terminology for all these grammar tools and rules. So you may see it as, as I mentioned, essential, non-essential, identifying, non-identifying, defining, non-defining, restrictive, non-restrictive. These all basically mean the same thing. We're talking about the function or the purpose of the clause or phrase. So I'm just going to stick to essential, although you'll understand I'm talking about the same things throughout, okay? So now, here's a, just a quick example to see what I'm referring to. And it, here's essential use of a, a clause. The man who lives next door is a doctor. Now, the main clause, the independent clause is, the man is a doctor. But because I don't know which man is being referred to, I need to identify him. So I need to add an identifying adjective clause, which is essential to this sentence. It needs to be in the sentence, otherwise the meaning of the sentence is not complete. And because it needs to be there, I don't use a comma. Non-essential. Dr. Brown, so it's a specific person, I know who this person is, who lives next door, this is just extra information that I can take out, is moving to Chicago. So the independent clause, Dr. Brown is moving to Chicago, complete idea, does not need any more information. Anything that I add to it is non-essential. And therefore, I put it between commas because it's in the middle of the sentence. So now, let's look at a bit more uh, specifics. Let's start with adjective clauses and phrases. Now, when I talk about phrases, adjective phrases, in this particular case, I'm going to talk about participles. So a full clause, and when you reduce the clause, you get rid of the uh, relative pronoun, you get rid of the be verb or whatever the case may be, or you combine them, and you're left with a participle. And I'll point this out in the examples. Again, essential no comma. When we're using an adjective clause, and I'm going to specifically talk about that or which, because this is where most people make mistakes. Essential adjective clause, no comma, that. Non-essential with comma, which. Don't mix the two up. Don't put a comma with that. Don't leave out the comma with which. And this is what people do quite a bit. The graders, uh, the IELTS and TOEFL graders are looking for it. It could lead to confusion in certain situations as well. A couple of examples. Of the various solutions that have been proposed. So there are many solutions. What solutions are we talking about? We're talking about the solutions that were proposed. So I need to have that without a comma because this is essential. I'm identifying which solutions we're talking about. Senator Greens is the most viable. Here we have your independent clause. So next sentence. Of the various solutions proposed, proposed is a participle. I took that have been, and I took them out, because all I'm left with is the one participle, and I don't need, when you have a relative pronoun that's also the subject, and of whatever form of the be verb, you can take it out. So, uh, the various solutions proposed, comma, which range from the absurd to the miraculous, so I'm giving you a little bit of more information about those solutions. I'm not identifying them, I'm giving you a little bit of a description of them. I can take it out or I can leave it in, which means it's non-essential. I have comma, I have which, and I have another comma at the end of it. 
in my independent clause. Of the various solutions proposed, so again the participle, which range from, and I take the which and I take the range and I combine them into a participle, an active participle, ranging, so there's the range, the which, ranging, that doesn't matter. It is still a non-essential phrase. I still need the comma before and after. Okay. Now, sometimes you will see a comma before the relative pronoun that, but that's usually because there's an interruption between the, the noun and the adjective clause that identifies it. So any country, treaty member or not, Okay, this is not, I don't need this, I'm not identifying, I'm not defining, I'm not doing anything. So I put it between commas. That wants to give a speech. So any country that wants to give a speech may submit a request. That's your independent clause. I need to I talk about which specific countries, the ones that want to submit a, a speech, uh, sorry, they want to give a speech, they must do something, right? So although I have, uh, although I'm using that, and it's an essential adjective clause, I interrupted it. So this comma and this comma, they go with this phrase, okay? So that comma after not has nothing to do with that. That is still connected to country. It was just interrupted. And I'm gonna show you this same sentence in a different way in a, in a moment, okay? A few more examples. So now that's that in which. All the other relative pronouns, whose, who, whom, etc. All of them, if you need them, or if you don't need them, that depend, that decides whether you need a comma or not. If you need them, no comma. If you don't need them, comma. The new, the bank's new CEO, whose pedigree includes stints, dot, 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 will begin. I'm not identifying this person. I'm just giving you a little bit of background information about him. I can take it out. I put it in commas. The bank's upper management, who had worked with him, okay? Telling you something essential about them. He's, he has a relationship with several of the members. How do we know what's that relationship? They worked with him before. Uh, again, okay, so let me go back here. They chose Mr. Smith because of his relationship with several members of the bank's upper management. I could leave this alone as a complete sentence, but I want to explain, I want to Basically, I define that relationship, and therefore I'm adding an adjective clause that is essential for the definition, not essential for identif identifying or uh, restricting otherwise. The responsible students. Now, whenever you have a preposition with an, a relative clause, you're going to be using a comma, okay? Because here I'm giving you a little bit of extra information, and I'm putting an object pronoun here whom, not who, admitted that it was. And then you have the rest of your admitted that it was. Here you have a noun clause, not an adjective clause. Make sure you know the difference. They who vandalized. It was they who did something. I'm completing the meaning. I'm defining who they are. And then I'm no comma here, a comma here, and this comma goes back with this one. Independent clause, the responsible students will be expelled immediately. That's all I need. It's a complete sentence. The responsible students will be uh, expelled. Everything in between is not identifying or defining who these students are. It's just telling you something about them, okay, what they did. The location of the movie shoot about which something happened. Again, preposition and pronoun, you're going to follow a comma. The plot of the novel, the central focus of which was. Another way to say this is the plot of the novel of which the central focus was. Both of these work the same way. The of which is about the novel. The central focus of which, here this which goes with plot. Whoops. Here, plot of the novel, of which. The which still goes with plot. Of the novel is a little, is a prepositional uh, phrase identifying which plot, okay? So obviously there's no comma here because it's identifying it. And I'll get to phrases in a moment as well. Adverb clauses, they don't need uh, comma. They don't, they do need commas, but they don't rely on essential versus non-essential, right? They're just placement. If you're beginning the sentence with an adverb clause, then you're going to use a comma before the independent clause. Other way around, then you don't need the comma. That's the general rule. But, again, the more 
comfortable you become with writing and the language, the more you'll realize that you have options, right? If a stock market investor, regardless of his experience or courage, I'm just giving you a little bit of extra something here. So here I have a prepositional phrase between commas. If a stock market investor fails to properly, here is your full clause, research the companies whose shares he buys, he is almost certain. Now notice I put the comma here between brackets. Why? Because technically, I started the sentence with uh, if, with an adverb clause. Here, I should technically put a comma. But if I take the comma out, a reader will have no problem understanding what's going on. A, a reader will understand shares, he buys he. It's very clear that you're starting a new clause, that he is, is your independent clause. So here, if you want, take it out. If you're not sure, just follow the standard rule. Begin with an adverb clause, comma before the independent clause. Again, it's all about comfort level in this case. Again, if placing an adverb clause between another clause, use commas before and after. So I mentioned this sentence before. Any country that wants to give a speech at the annual open house, here I'm going to introduce an adverb clause, whether it is a treaty member or not, it being the country, may submit. So any country may submit. Identifying adjective clause, here I have an basically interrupt, interruption using an adverb clause. So I'm going to put commas on both sides to show that it's an interruption. Okay. Uh, that's another thing about adverb clauses. You can put them in the middle, you can put them at the end. Whether it is a treaty member or not, comma, because this is a separate idea. It is not essential to the sentence. Any country that wants to can do or may submit, whatever the case is. You can put it in the middle, you can put it at the beginning, you can put it in the middle, you can put it anywhere else you like. You can get rid of whether it is and just leave the phrase, a treaty, country or not, and put it between or before the uh, identifying adjective clause. You have a lot of options. But you're always going to, anything that's interrupting, anything that doesn't affect the sentence if you take it out, put it uh, with commas at some location, depending where it is. Obviously, one comma here. If it's in the middle, two commas on either side. Noun clauses don't take a comma. Okay, so noun clauses, especially the ones that start with that, noun clauses never take a comma because the noun clause is acting as a subject or an object. So it's part of the clause, part of the sentence, right? The only time you will see a comma before that is when it's interrupted again, or if you're in a, presenting a list. The principal ultimately agreed after seeing overwhelming evidence. So here you have an adverb, adverbial phrase after he saw the overwhelming evidence between commas because it's interrupting. That, so agreed that his approach was. In this case, you're putting a comma before that. This comma goes with the adverb clause, not with the noun clause. That's the key to understanding the difference, like where to put them and when not to put them. The report includes, concludes that concludes a few things. One, that the theory is wrong. Two, that it is based on false premises. And three, that those dot, dot, dot. So when you have a list, if your list includes noun clauses as objects, then noun clause, comma, noun clause, comma, noun clause, or however many you have, because that's your parallel uh, structure that you have to look at. And you can see a video about parallel structures. Uh, there's a link up here for that, OK? Phrases, same idea. Phrases can be used as adjectives, can be used as adverbs. If they're essential, no comma. If they're, if they're uh, non-essential, comma. Several companies have submitted their proposals. The company, which company? The one with the lowest bid, right? So instead of the company that has or that makes the lowest bid, adjective clause, OK, prepositional phrase works in the same way. It's an identifying adjective phrase will be given. Several companies have submitted their bid. Acme company, so I've already identified which company. I don't need any more identification. As a result of its bid, will be given the contract. Why will be they be giving it? As a result of their bid. So you have an adverb phrase as well in there. Now, sometimes you have uh, 
you have a situation where the noun can have more than one thing attributed to it or connected to it. So Fitzgerald, we're talking about F. Scott Fitzgerald. He's a very famous American writer. Fitzgerald's novel, The Great Gatsby, is still studied in, in many high school uh, classes today. Now, here I'm not using because I understand that uh, Fitzgerald has more than one novel. So if I'm talking about one specific novel, then I'm identifying which novel I'm talking about. So then I don't have a comma because I'm telling you specifically which one of the several that he has. Fitzgerald's debut novel, comma, This Side of Paradise, comma, because here the debut means first. So I've already identified it, so the name of it is just extra, if you're not sure which is his, his debut novel. And then comma, comma is not uh, widely known. Here I need to identify which novel. Here I've already identified with debut. This is extra, commas, okay? And that's basically the key. The more you read, the more you'll identify when commas are used, when they're not used. If it's not used, you, you recognize that the writer is telling you something by not using a comma. The writer is telling you something by using a comma. Pay attention to these because sometimes you can make a very big mistake if you don't uh, actually pay attention to these things, okay? I hope this was a little bit helpful. I, there will be one more comma video coming down the road for all the other uses or non-uses. If you have any questions about this video, please ask me in the YouTube comment section. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Come back next week, I'll have more vocab, grammar, writing tips, etc. See you then.